Hey everyone, it's Derek from 4Golf Custom here and today we're looking at Mizuno's new range of JPX 921s. It's not really a new review, we're going to skip past all the tech, all the CG placement and materials and all that and get right to the information that you need to make a better decision on these. We've been fitting with these for the last couple of months, so we've got some great insights into how the heads operate, don't forget there's five different heads if you include the left hander, and some shaft information and fitting scenarios so that you can maybe connect with what head is best and how to get that into your bag and get the best result and play better golf. So David, straight into the uh, 921 Tour head. Mm -hmm. So let's start at the very kind of top, I guess. Uh, talk me through what you've been seeing at the fittings with that head. I guess the whole Mizuno range, they're, obviously they're, a, they're an iron brand, well they make great irons is the, is the truth, but they now have nine models if you bring in the MP20 range as well. So let's start by kind of where this fits in. So this is kind of somewhere between the MP20 blade and the MP MMC. So that's kind of where it fits into Mizuno's range in terms of forgiveness. So you've got a, a very pretty sleek product, very little offset tends to be, again, maybe somebody who draws it or wants to control it. It's got plenty of loft on it, so then you tend to use heavy shafts, plenty of body to them. Again, I've had a couple of customers who, again, have used light weights and softs with, but predominantly it's a anti-left Project X tour issue type shaft scenario to give the player maximum control. So brilliant, that's really cool. So what we'll do is as we go through this folks, we'll try to map this out in, as our, in our matrix, but also within the actual Mizuno range, because Dave's right, it's extraordinarily vast and can be a bit complicated to be honest for the golfers. We see the people coming in here for their fittings and they're kind of a little bit sort of rabbit in the headlights about what head and how does that work. And that's our job is kind of filter through this. So if that's the, the tour then, forged then as a product, so the forged head, where does that slot into your, I guess, your head and when you're fitting out here? So, so as, a, as a fitter, the, the forged product tends to be my number one go-to in the Mizuno range. Again, if we go back to the MP20s, it kind of slits in between MMC and HMB. Multi-purpose use, you don't necessarily have to be a low handicapper or a high handicapper to have this in the golf bag. You use a, a, a plethora of different shafts. You can fit, you, I'd almost use the whole range in this. You can use it to get the ball in the air. You can use it to be anti-left. You can use it to be anti-right. It's sleek looking, but it's nice and forgiving. It doesn't look too small on the eye, but it doesn't look big and offset either. That's cool. Where would that fit in then in terms of other brands or product in that line? Because that's a fairly crowded market, that space. Where would that fit in or where would you I, apply that? Again, it, it, it's kind of maybe something that fits in between if you're a tailor-made, the P770 and P790, it kind of slots in between the two of them. Okay. So maybe it's more of a P770 look with the forgiveness of a P790 if you're going up against TaylorMade. Again, in, in tight list, it's probably somewhere between a, a, a T100, it's probably its direct rival there. Interesting. Which from a, that tends to be that those three kind of cover each other off. And is, that, is it fair to say that this is, like, they talk a lot about this uh, out there on different channels and different uh, platforms. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome, please subscribe. Uh, feel, is, it, is, this where you, is this where you go from performance into feel? Is that where you place this? I think this is where performance meets feel. So you end up with something which is sleek and looks with loads of forgiveness, but because of the way it's designed and the way it's forged, you get this absolutely beautiful feel, which is synonymous with all Mizuno golf clubs over the years. Um, right, so uh, we're gonna slot this in here. We weren't thinking too much about it, and we, you remembered it quite conveniently, the SEL iron. Um, talk us through the player that would look, look at that product. So SEL, which is Special Edition Lefty. So. Probably the first time in my mind that I can ever remember somebody designing something specifically for left-handers, which has been a huge miss in the industry for years. It's essentially a combination between the forged and the tore head. You get a four and a five iron in the forged, and then you can go six to gap wedge in the tore. So, fabulous product. Gives you forgiveness at the top end of it, gives you control at the bottom end of it. They've fixed the lofts, which can sometimes be a problem because the tour tend to be much more lofted than the, than the forge tend to be. So they've got that fixed. I think the only thing that they've really missed out on is why isn't there an SER? Why isn't there a right-handed version of this? I think it would be a great seller. I think it would be a great way of combining two yeah. technologies. Yes, you can order it from Mizuno as a custom option, 
but if it naturally existed, I think it would be a big seller for them. And talk me through the player then. So who's who did you, I remember seeing a set going through workshop earlier mm-hmm. on? Yeah. Uh, in the week, who just talk us through why did he, why did he go for that, or, or why was that the set he ended up with? He was a good low handicap player. Not that that's essential in something like this because it's again quite a versatile product. But he maybe struggled getting the four and the five iron up into the air. Right. So blending it with the forge or giving it a bigger profile just helped with the launch without necessarily sacrificing the spin shafts was the same and then with the lofts being matched all the way through then you get a perfectly blended set so then that brings us on to hot metal pro that's a, a club that you've you've plugged into quite a bit and mm-hmm. uh, talk me through where that sits in your in your matrix and again in amongst the other brands as well again kind of sits in after hmb it, from a Mizuno range. Again, hot metal is Mizuno's way of doing a speed product or a distance club. The Pro, just a slight uh, neater version. Again, technology packed into a smaller space, I guess is the simple way to look at it. So it tends to be, I need help in terms of forgiveness and speed, but I don't necessarily want to look at it being large in size. So it kind of fits out the more of the cosmetic than necessarily performance, because the, the hot metal Standard does an exactly the similar job, just in a slightly more forgiving profile with a little bit more offset. Where does that fit in amongst other brands? And where are you seeing that sort of plugging in when clients come for fittings? I, I see why they have a pro model. It maybe goes up against Maverick Pro, which is that forgiving product in a neater looking visual. That sort of product range. Again, I I think the Forge does an incredibly good job at being that product as well with maybe a little bit more feel. So maybe I'd tend to use a little bit more Forge than I would Pro. But essentially, the Pro fits in if you need distance and you're looking for a good visual at the same time. What shafts are plugging into that head? Because that's a strange, it's a sort of a strange pocket there. It's a strange pocket, but I mean, when it comes to standard, it's got quite a heavy, stable shaft in it. But I would tend to use this as more of a, because it's a speed story. I think you can use, again, a little bit like the Forge, the whole range pretty much in terms of shafts. I've used it in soft, lightweight to get the ball up in the air because it's so powerful and forward in its aggression. I've used nice and stiff Project X again, just so it doesn't turn over. So then you can have something which is powerful but if you still draw it, you can still get that element of control out of it. Brilliant, which then leads us into the hot metal <clears throat> and a club that you've really been sort of a big promoter of. I see obviously that probably suits the type of demographic of golfer that we're seeing lately, um, but I do see those, those heads coming through workshop getting built. So yeah. you easily talk us through who that's for. What I mean, this is, this is your, I hate using the word high handicapper, but this is the easiest club in Mizuno's range to hit. It's nice and big, it's nice and offset. If you have a cut, if you miss it right, which is inevitably is an amateur problem, it helps keep that nice and straight. It's distance orientated so it can go up against maybe Sim from TaylorMade or Maverick from Callaway. Kind of sits in that kind of demographic as it were. Again, tends to be regular flexes. I've used a lot of graphite in it. Again, just great ladies product, nice and easy to hit. Gets the ball in the air, good speed off the face. Again, typical Mizuno, good visual, good, good, good feel, good prettiness in something which is incredibly forgiven. But it's fair to say, like, because Mizuno are synonymous with players' irons, and, and as you say, you, the, the, the Forged is a very popular product for you. And should people be considering this that are out there that maybe haven't tried Mizuno irons before, that are of that higher handicap, but they should give it a go? You asked me what it goes up again, and I listed you maybe the two best speed products in the marketplace, and it does go up against them. It's not like... Mizuno do a lovely pretty product but it's not as performance based as the TaylorMade or the Callaway. So it, it, it sits in there against the three of them all with an even footing. Different bits of technology, different bits of feel. So there's different categories that might pick it. This might necessarily be the one person who's looking for a little bit more feel and a little bit more visual as opposed to maybe the Callaways and the TaylorMades which are a little bit harder off the face but create great distance in the same sense. So if you're thinking about new irons, Mizuno are definitely ones to consider. 
but the iron range is vast. You're gonna want some help on this. Get a fitting if you can, get to a demo day, and certainly try them out. There's a number of different heads and a massive range. We've done quite a few different reviews of other Mizuno product that are currently in the MP line and also in the last JPX 919 range. I'll put links in the description below, and maybe pop a few links up here for you. If you like what we're doing, please share this video. If you know a golfer out there who's thinking about changing his irons for the upcoming season, share this video. He's gonna want this information to make a better choice. Thanks for watching, we'll see you at the next video.